The last thing I want to discuss that will help us with Chapter 4 are what are called rational inequalities, which is when you end up with a rational function that you are comparing with greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. And the way you solve a rational inequality, first step, as with rational graphs of rational functions, is to factor it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to analyze these factored forms using a number line to answer the question on when does this left-hand side, in this case, positive, and then the, on this one, when is the left-hand side negative or equal to zero. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to make a number line and you want to mark off where the zeros of the numerator and where the zeros of the denominators, if they were polynomial functions, would be. So the possible place I'm going to zero for each of my terms. I'm going to mark this as zero. So for each term, 2x minus 1 is zero at 1 half. x minus 2 is zero at positive 2. 2x plus 3 is 0 at negative 1 and a half. And then x minus 2 is 0 at positive 2. So I'm going to actually change the color of numbers on my number line so they don't get confused with the black zeros. So 3 halves is one of my points, 1 half, 2. So now what I want to do is I'm going to do a sign analysis on each one of my factors. Well, 2x minus 1 is 0 here. If I put a number to the right of 0 in, if I like a 1, I get 2 minus 1, which is a positive number. All I really care about here are positive or negative. Okay, anything to the left is going to end up with a negative number. Anytime you have a linear term where the coefficient in front of the x is positive, once you know where your zero is, everything to the right is going to be positive and everything to the left is going to be negative. If the coefficient in front of your x is negative, then to the left would be positive and to the right would be negative. So all of these are linear terms. So I'm going to have... this piece of information. And now what I want to do is I want to analyze each region of the graph of my number line and figure out whether I'm positive or not. So for the first region I want to analyze, I'm going to analyze to the left of negative 3 halves. So what I'm going to do is a, pos a negative times a negative is a positive. So this gives me a positive in this region. A negative times a negative is a positive. A positive over a positive is a positive. And a positive is greater than zero. So everything in this infinite region is greater than zero. Next thing I'm going to do is analyze between negative 3 halves and 1 half. And what do I get? Negative over a negative is a positive. Positive over a negative is a negative. Positive uh, times. Negative times negative, positive. Positive times negative, negative. Positive over negative is a negative. A negative is not less than zero, so I'm not going to shade in any of this region between these points right here. So this region is not shaded. The next region is between 1 half and 2. Positive times negative is positive, I mean negative. Positive times negative is negative. Negative over negative is positive. So I have to shade in everything in between 1 half and 2. And the last region I want to check is beyond 2. Positive times positive is positive. Positive times positive is positive. Positive over positive is positive. So that region gets shaded in. Now what I need to do is I need to check the zeros. 
Well, when the denominator is zero, it's undefined, so I won't, I won't shade that one in. Here, the denominator is negative, but the numerator is zero. Is zero greater than zero? No, so I won't shade it in. And again, I won't shade this point in because it would be undefined. So I now have various regions, and I want to write my final answer in intercept form. So, I mean, not intercept, but interval form. So I can go from negative infinity to negative 3 halves, not touching either one of them. Union with 1 half to 2. Union with 2 to infinity. And everywhere in these three intervals, the graph of this rational function would be positive. So this may help you graphing rational functions is by solving the rational inequality for x greater than zero will tell you when it's positive. That may help you determine whether the graph is above the x-axis or below the x-axis. Next rational function, I want to write my factors in my numerator. I want to write the factors in my denominator. I want to identify when each of these are equal to zero. X minus one is equal to zero when X is equal to one. So I have a zero here. This term is never equal to zero on the real number line. This right here would give me complex solutions, so it is never equal to zero. And notice if I put a zero in here, I get zero plus zero. If I put a zero in, I get one. If I put a negative one in, I get negative one squared, which is one, minus one, which is zero, plus one is one. If I put negative a half in, I get negative I get positive one fourth minus a half plus one, which is positive. This graph right here is always positive. If I were to graph this function, it would be always positive. So I'm just gonna mark that down right now. Linear term leading coefficients positive is gonna be positive to the right of the zero and negative to the left of the zero. In the denominator, I have a zero at negative two. So this is zero at negative two. And to the right will be positive. To the left will be negative. When x minus 2 is equal to 0, I will have a 0 at positive 2. To the right will be positive, and the left negative. Just like the last one, I want to analyze at my points of where the numerator and or denominator is 0, analyze in these various intervals, and to determine whether I am less than or equal to zero in those intervals. So I want to know when I'm equal to zero or when I am negative. So negative times a positive is a negative. A negative times a negative is a negative. Negative over a negative is a positive. So none of these in this area get shaded. My next interval between negative two and one, negative over a positive is a negative. A positive over a negative is a negative. These are times, I'm sorry. Negative times positive, negative. Positive times negative, negative. Negative over negative is a positive. So nothing in this region would get shaded. Here, positive times positive, positive. Positive times negative, negative. Positive over negative is negative. So everything between one and two gets shaded in. And in my last interval, positive times positive is positive. Positive times positive is positive. Positive over positive is positive. Nothing in this region. 
So what I want to do is I now need to check the endpoints of my intervals. Well, here I'd be dividing by zero, so I will never fill in that dot. Okay. If I put a zero in here, I get zero for my answer. Is zero less than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. So this endpoint gets filled in. If I put in a zero at two, I get an undefined solution, so I will not fill in that zero. So the only interval where my graph is less than or equal to zero is the closed interval from one, and then two has open on that side. So the only time my graph is going to be negative or equal to zero is on this interval. The only time my graph is going to be negative is strictly between one and two. And my graph is going to be positive or undefined everywhere else. So I know my graph is positive here, undefined at this point. Positive here, equal to zero here, negative here, undefined here, and positive there. So that's how, how using rational inequalities can help you come up with the graph of a rational function.